Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another Market Watch Investments video for you guys tonight. I have a plethora of stuff I'm going to be showcasing for you guys. These are going to be my personal selections, and I hope you enjoy getting things started tonight with a very kind of obscure set. White Mexican likes to dip into obscure sets every once in a while, and then I'm actually be showcasing two very obscure sets. Um, Dark Legends is a little bit more popular one, but we're going to get to that later on. Starting off with Dark Legends here, there is some pretty cool stuff and some pretty interesting price points that I've noticed from the research I did on the set. Of course, we got Ultra Dark Bribe, you got Super Rare Cyber Harpy Lady, Graceful Charity, Super Sangan, Exodia, Regeki, Blue Eyes. There's all just a kind of interesting plethora of old school classics in here, and they're all going for some really interesting price points. Obviously, with uh, Dark Bribe surprisingly being the highest market price here, between, market price between fourteen and thirty-two, and then I, I want to say that I believe there's a secret version of this Cyber Harpy Lady, but just wanted to do a quick flash review of the prices on here, just to kind of give you guys, you know, a dip in the water of this set. I just think this is a really cool set as far as it's just again like one of those kind of side subsets. I don't really know how extenuous this printing ran for dark legends but it also has a really cool name and there's just a plethora of just kind of random random cards that came in here um nothing too blowout again i just really like the the name of the set dark legends just sounds really really infamous and really really cool and again it's a it's a really old set so it hence it has a lot of the core old stuff and it's just a very just kind of obscure set so mm -hmm. There isn't really anything specific I wanted to showcase. I just kind of wanted to highlight it really quick. So if you guys are interested, you guys can definitely dip into Dark, Le Dark Legends later on if you guys want to. Next is going to be Magician of Faith. More specifically, the very amazing Duelist Saga Ultra Rare. If you guys have been watching my videos, you guys probably know by now I'm a huge Avent fan of Duelist Saga, Shonen Jump promos, and DT Ultras, DT in general. Duelist Saga, again... It, on its own merit alone, the only set to have this special lightsaber, laser beam looking kind of hollow foil here. Really, really great stuff. And let's go ahead and take a look at prices for this. It's faring for about seven bones pretty much across the board here for the first couple sets. These are all near mint first edition, so that's pretty cool. There's a fat three stack here. And there's about three pages available. So this is kind of maintaining. This is slowly, slowly, slowly starting to trickle up over, I would say, probably like the last year or so. Anyway, just definitely one of the better cards in this very, very amazing set. And there's a couple other versions, too. Of course, there's the Champions Pack Super Rare, which is the most difficult to get. One of the uh, older versions, obviously, the original rares came out of Metal Raiders, which I'm really curious. I want to take a look at the first editions. But, you know, you have the Super Rare from Champion Pack 2, which is ranging between 380 to 400 plus. Uh, there is also the Speed Duel Attack from the Deep, which I actually just picked up one of these copies yesterday from a friend. Really, really cool. Not quite as good as the Duelist Saga. I do appreciate the Duelist Saga uh, unique hollow foiling and the Ultra Rare a little bit better than this, but this is still faring a very, very f uh, good price point for being a Speed Duel card. I think Speed Duel is kind of a little bit more of a smaller crowd for that personally, but this is still fetching for about nine bones across the board. Again, all near mint first editions, and then it continues to trickle up after that. Oh, surprisingly enough, only two pages of availability for this version, so definitely some great value for the Speed Duel ultra the last one that i wanted to review was going to be the og print dawning all the way back to gen 1 set to the metal raiders and that is going to be right here surprisingly enough this is actually reprinted quite a few times in the the original rarity of rare you have the og metal raiders rare you have of course the dark legends rare and you have the dark beginning rare so i thought that was kind of interesting that uh also the retro pack one was also rare so uh, four different prints of rares uh, in the same rarity, which is pretty, pretty cool. But again, with that being said, obviously my favorite is for all the reasons I mentioned above, more specifically for affordability price points and just aesthetics. The Duel Saga is going to be my number one choice for printing for this card. But the, of course, you know, the, the Speed Duels and the Super Rare Champion Packs are going to hold, you know, are just really good as well. Okay, so I want to take a look at the first edition prints. Obviously, unlimiteds are really not much of anything. There are a couple bones here. Near mints go up to about three, which is pretty interesting. But looks like there is a, a Portuguese one here for 26 bones. 
for a lightly played first. That's the first first edition that we get. And it goes all the way up to a whopping 41 bones. Uh, this is a near mint. So there is no lightly played first editions. They're all just go straight into the category of near mint, starting at a whopping 41. So again, I'm not very surprised by this. I am kind of, it's kind of a steep price point, honestly. This just being a rare, again, you got to factor in this being Gen 1 set to extremely old, extremely nostalgic, really, really high even just being a rare but just you know well already has been and has bled through completely to the collector's market this card was banned for the longest time it's i love this card and i kind of i don't want to sound like a broken record but i kind of go back and i, I do tend to to review this uh, i've reviewed this multiple times just because this card is i get it it's slow it's a flip effect and all that but i mean it's a level one it's a light it's a spell caster this is really really cool artwork I, I, I really like the artwork a lot on this and she's got a magical pimp cane so that's pretty cool and you know it, this is just worth crazy money so i mean if you guys kept your stuff from when you're a kid or you're able to find a a near mint or lightly played first edition pick it up for cheap and this is this is great money so i definitely wanted to showcase this because i think this is just an insane value um, again, it's Gen 1 Yu-Gi-Oh! First Edition, though, so it's not too surprising, but it's definitely holding a pretty fat price tag for what it is. So really great stuff on that. So I'm not a big fan of pendulums. I actually despise pendulums. I really hate that mechanic. I, I actually spit a lot of hate on pendulums. I just really just, that was a complete mechanic that I did not like that came into the game. Um, I have little to no ever really pilot anything pendulum like but the draconia cards i'll i'll kind of set aside my differences and kind of negate the fact or not pay attention that i that i hate pendulums for the draconia cards because dragonia the they're they're actually relatively good for what they are um they all came out as rares originally from you know like cross souls and secrets of eternity clash of rebellions all that kind of era Yu-Gi-Oh. And then in the special editions, they were reproduced or reprinted in ultra rares, which again, I, I it's kind of I, I really bag a lot on ultra rares. It's definitely my least favorite rarity, but they were upgraded to hollow foils, so at least there is that. And these cards, they just look. It's the artwork for these. I completely overlooked that they're pendulum cards because the artwork is like so cool like i love the artwork on these and the they're like the descriptions are just like so badass armed with muskets and iron spears this mounted land troops of the draconia empire are feared by the repetir kingdom and other bordering nations like that sounds really really cool you know this guy he's got a spear and he's riding of a velociraptor looking thing just really really cool and this is insanely cheap there's a fat stack here for 30 cents I wouldn't say like insanely cheap. I mean, insanely cheap would be like even, you know, it's under a bone though. So like it's definitely in that market price where there's fat stacks and they're under a bone. So there's plenty of availability um, to, to a certain extent. I mean, there's a 15 stack, six stack, and then of course the 10 stack, only two pages, which is interesting because maybe people just aren't listing these because it is a special edition promo. So there should be a pretty good uh, amount uh, on the, on the market. Again, it's a very cheap card, though, so, I mean, a lot of people just probably don't even find it worth it listing just because it's so insanely low value, but that's what makes this card, like, really kind of cool because the pendulum effects are actually relatively good if you if you pause videos and read through them. I think they're pretty decent for what they are, but the artwork is just blow out. This guy has, like, a blaster spear harpoon pistol, and he's flying around on this dragon thing. Again, like, the spiky armor, just super cool, silently creeping from from the deep sea elite black ops marine troops of the draconia empire wage an endless battle against the hated principality of dion on the sea's opposite shores i don't know there's something about these these descriptions are just so badass and the artwork is just completely blow out and again i just completely overlooked that these are these are pendulums just because the artwork is just so so cool and the effects the, the pendulum effects are, are relatively are, relatively good for generic just you know, normal monster stuff vanillas in my opinion and again just insanely cheap these are like under a quarter pretty much all across the board and there is uh, a lot more availability on that one there's about four pages for the ultra rare reprint and then the last one i i think it it doesn't quite have as cool artwork as the f the first two but this one again it's still it's still pretty cool for what it is 
And this effect is actually really good too. I, I, I think it's pretty good. The pendulum effects all for all three of them. They have pretty cool. And you know he's flying on this like pterodactyl looking thing, like sniping around, and you know it's got like a, a Jurassic Park looking themed world over here. So pretty cool. Uh, this thing rumored as being formed to invade the neutral floating sky state of S Sex Club. Sex Club. Six Club. However you say that. These mounted air troops of the draconia empire have prompted bordering nations to strengthen their security so i don't know draconia just has some really cool storyline to them so anyway there they all are they're really cheap this one again is you know about a quarter plenty of availability so i just wanted to showcase that really quick because i really just you know it's for what for what it is i think it's pretty cool next is gonna be gel and duo so there is a couple different interesting prints. This is my personal top of the choice because, of course, it is infamous DT5. Again, DT has been, you know, out of print for many years. Konami has not pushed any communication of bringing this rarity back. Uh, this used to be an old game machine that you would play, and after the game ended or whatever, they would, it, would, it would spit out a card. And, you know, you can go all the way from commons all the way to ultra rares in this set. And this is a big fanboy, fan favorite rarity i love this rarity a lot and i definitely know i'm not alone i know a lot of players really appreciate dual terminal and i'm you know it's already been part of the collector's market and it's just going to continue to bleed into the collector's market as dual terminal just continues to get older and older and harder and harder to get so this is a really cool card um so it's kind of got like a marshmallow effect where it can't be destroyed by battle and then it also has kind of like the kaiser seahorse effect where you can treat it as uh, two tributes which fares uh really really good if you are playing the infamous christia which is you know one of the best level eights of all time in my personal opinion I really like counter fairies and just light fairy jet decks in general so it's a really cool card and uh, this is insanely cheap there is a 14 stack here near mint and this they're like a little over a quarter so this is insane i would not be surprised if this starts to trickle away as well as this 27 stack here for just a hair a little bit under a bone and uh, three pages available so I don't know, like, I, I already have several copies of these, but I, I want to get more just because it's dual terminal. It's got this cutesy, like, pink cotton candy looking, like, halo artwork. And I just think this is a really good card. I mean, it's fairy level four, light. And again, you can, uh, you can pop it off for a Christia, which is really, really cool, in my opinion. And of course, there is an ultra version and and a secret version the secret version is actually pretty expensive it's holding some pretty fat price tags the dark legends was the ultra rare which again that's what i talked about in the beginning of this video very obscure side set it wasn't really a long-standing print so that's actually pretty cool because of the set again i don't normally go for ultra rares i don't really like ultra rares again unless it's dual saga dual terminal uh, shonen jump or again like gen one which i consider the first 13 core sets lob through rds first edition but then of course the, these like random subside subscure sets like dark legends are, are pretty cool too but remember they didn't you know they didn't have first edition print so just keep in mind for these you know subsets the secret rare obviously being the high rarity secret rare being the highest rarity is just gorgeous i've actually seen little to know the uh, little to no, uh, i haven't seen hardly any of these and maybe like one or two ever in person the secret rare foiling again a lot of these pictures on tcg player just do not do the cards artwork justice they're really really terrible and like depixelized and just don't look very good but this card secret rare foiling is very deeply embedded and predominant it's very aesthetically pleasing it looks really really great and um starting market price for unlimiteds is you know about almost nine bones for unlimiteds lightly played there's only two pages here on the market for near mints unlimited goes all the way up to 10. Core TCG has a fat sack of 29 for 10 here, but they are unfortunately unlimited. Again, I do not recommend. I know. So there's kind of like two different breaks in the market. There's the break between unlimited and first editions, which is a huge gap. And even of late that I've been noticing more and more often to be a common trend is the difference in prices from lightly played first editions to near mint first editions is also a very very varying gap too so keep that and keep that in mind it's definitely good things to uh keep in mind and be aware of and then the first first edition is going to be 21 bones 21 bones plus that's for lightly played and then near mints go all the way up near mint first editions go all the way up to 
uh, 30 bones and then randomly this 200 like we literally we go from 30 for the first near mint uh for the first near mint first edition and then victory games has a very ambitious bolstered price of 200 bones so it's uh again you know corner on the market on these cards that people have them it's there, there's some crazy numbers going on so next is gonna be christia the infamous the legendary the one and only this card is amazing again it's this is like my all-time favorite level eight card big fairy fan obviously stardust overdrive was just like an insanely i think star strike blast was the one that was all first edition i think there's actually unlimited yeah there's definitely unlimited prints of this set because i all of the versions i have several prints of this secret but they're unfortunately all unlimited and the unlimiteds are still going for some really good money and the first editions are like ungodly hard to find like i've yet to see like hardly any players hold a first edition print of this again there's two commons well actually two supers the 2011 super rares 10 promos and then the destiny soldier super rares which again are not bad if you don't want to drop you know fat stacks for the secrets and then of course there's this measly common here let's go ahead and take a look at the secrets though because you know aesthetically you, you can never go wrong with secret rare secret rare is just so so great and starting market price again for even not even the first editions is 46 46 bones is the starting market price for this for lightly plates unlimited and then for the first near mint it goes all the way up to about 59 bones and there's actually surprisingly five pages uh, it looks like there's been a little bit more of a bolster in the numbers for qu quantity here but the first editions are not going to appear until the third page and the first first edition lightly played is 205 bones so very 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 quickly there's a steep cutoff for this card and its price and there's another one here that goes all the way up to 215 plus and let's see if we can find a near mint first edition it looks like these are all foreign and unlimited and then the first first edition oh actually i'm sorry uh, this is uh first first edition near mint is 343 bones for a near mint first edition again so just another perfect example of the price differentiation between not only first edition lightly plays and near mint uh, or, or unlimited in first editions but lightly played first edition to near mint first edition so whip out your graders that is uh that is a pretty pretty fat price tag next is going to be honest i feel like people kind of forget about this card and this is a, still a really really good card it's a fairy it's a level four it can kind of in, to a certain extent recycle itself back to the hand and i really i'm still waiting for konami to produce like a a dishonest or a dark honest or something that would work for darks you know dark and light are the biggest attributes and they always have the biggest pools of resources and like a you know I guess uh, there's just a lot of support for those 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 types of decks, lights and darks. So I'm really surprised that Konami has not broken out and propped out a, a, a dark version of this for Dark Monsters. I think that would be really cool, something to look forward to hopefully in the near future. And there's a lot of awesome prints of this. Of course, there's the original Light of Destruction Ghost Rare, which uh, I'm really curious. Obviously, this is going to be the highest rarity. This is going to be what the collectors want. Uh, this one's definitely um, the most aesthetically pleasing, you know, depending on player preference who you ask and uh let's see light destruction again if i'm not mistaken i believe this was the set that donned us our first first generation set of light swarms it's really cool deck archetype i really like light swarms a lot very splashable blendable you can mix them in with a whole bunch of cool stuff very graveyard eccentric and unlimited starting uh starting market price here for unlimited for lightly played is almost 80 bones uh starting market price near mints go all the way up to about 90 and let's see if we can find some first editions three pages here available on tcgp and it looks like there's an italian first edition for 124 bones the first english lightly played first edition is 156 bones and then there's an italian near mint here for 200 those are german first edition. i really do like these european prints they look really really cool uh, but you know completely up to you guys what you guys want to go for and then the first near mint first edition is 275 so and that bombs out 500 so 
definitely big uh, price difference on that margin. Of course, this being this, the original ghost rare, high rare, it's going to have some fight, some pretty fat price tags. But there's also some really healthy alternatives with really cool, like uh, really cool rarities. You know, like the again out of the same set. It's really cool how they made it also secret and ghost. The original, of course, light destruction as well as the ghost rare secrets. And for a while, I had several of these unlimited. They're going for a, a pretty penny for a while. I feel like they've kind of gone down. And well, maybe they've actually, actually gone up a little bit. So unlimited starting market price lightly played for unlimited lightly played is about twenty two bones. Near mint is almost about just under thirty, about twenty eight. And for first editions, they've gone, of course, you know, being first edition all the way up to about thirty eight bones for lightly played. There's three pages here on the market. Again, this is for the secret rare version. And the first Nearmint first edition goes all the way up to 55 bones and continues to trickle up to like 80, around 80. And then again, only three pages. So really great stuff. I, I would definitely recommend if you guys can afford it or trade for it or by all means, do not overpay just to get first editions. Do what you need to do. It's to acquire these first editions. I, I always recommend to invest in, in first editions over unlimiteds, but don't overpay, you know, just do acquire these cards within you know an appropriate means um the last two prints that i really like is going to be the dual terminal seven rares and of course the dual saga being infamous dual saga um the one and only in this is very very cheap you know 19 listen listings here it's between a, a bone to around about a bone and a half two bones um i really wouldn't pay much attention to any of these other ones mostly just commons and a plethora of other reprint stuff but Honestly, out of all of them, honestly, uh, honestly, honest, honestly, honestly, for honest, my favorite print is the DT7. I mean, the the, the Ghost Rare is gorgeous. The Secret Rare is gorgeous. Uh, I would definitely, you know, if I, I got rid of the majority of my unlimited ones, I would definitely like to pick up a first edition. The Dual Saga is just insanely affordable, so and it looks nice too because it's Dual Saga being the unique ra rarity that is, you know, the one and only but dual terminal again just like dual saga is very unique it's discontinued they're no longer producing it and it's 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 a little bit more what's well, about yeah it's it's significantly more expensive than the dual saga um but it's dual terminal and it's dual terminal rare and it's the shatter foil dual terminal which is one of my um more preferred uh dual terminal rarities and it's about five bones there's two here for five bones and it goes to six and then it pretty much manages around um Let's see like six seven and there's only two pages here unfortunately these are all one stack except for this two of for about five bones plus two bones shipping but for the price i think this is kind of like the the best the biggest bang for your buck you have really really nice aesthetics it's a dual terminal and it's it's honest and honest is, is awesome so completely up to you guys next is going to be the dragon rulers more specifically the 10 secret rare promo reprints Pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, the majority of these all came as rares in their original booster core sets. But, you know, this being secret rare, higher rarity, even though they were 10 promos, I still don't think that counters the fact that these just look so much more gorgeous in the secret rare hollow foiling here. So these, of course, are all banned besides Tempest. Tempest has un been unlocked for quite a while now. Um, obviously, the more popular ones is Tidal and, and Blaster being the fire and water ones artwork so just completely blow out these i so i kind of dip in and out of these i've always really try to keep an eye on these because even though these have been on the ban list for ages and i'm not saying that they're coming off the list anytime soon you never know konami's relatively unpredictable about what they're going to lift on the list and they've lifted some pretty blowout cards of late and uh it's 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 you never know you never really know and again these are very they're they're old now i mean they're going on eight years 2013 collector tens it was eight years ago and you know th these haven't really been mass produced i know that tempest was reprinted as a super in in one of the the subsets but all these other ones it's just the original rares from the core booster sets and then the 10 promo secrets which just look completely just immaculate like they're amazing so let's go ahead and look at some prices here they uh, are going for pretty much about five bones this one's about six if you factor in shipping and yeah they're pretty much five bones like pretty much all across the board these are all pretty much one stack stuff for these twosies here there's a three stack here and only four 
four pages. So again, just something to keep an eye on. I've I've personally have never traded away or sold my versions. I invested very heavily when when back in 2013. It was more so 2014 because I kind of bought them late, but I bought several cases of these and I've kept all of them because these just again they look really gorgeous. There's infamous history. There was a whole like Dragon Ruler versus the spell spell books, I believe it was era, and you get really infamous history, really really good core history on that. Title's going to be next. And this one's a, a little bit more cheaper. It's about three bones, so about two bones cheaper than Blaster. And it's, yeah, pretty much about three-ish, almost four bones when you, when, after you factor in shipping. Again, these are all pretty much one stacks, except for this two of, and then there's five pages available. But what you notice is you can't really pick these up in bulk anymore. I feel like for the longest time there was like, you know, 15, 20 stacks, 10 stacks a lot, and now they're just really kind of broken up, so it's kind of difficult to buy in bulk, at least from TCGP. So completely up to you on on, on this, but uh, really, really great. This this tin actually had Super Rare Black Luster Soldier, which was pretty cool. That was one of the other super promos. Red Ox is going to be next, the Earth one. I always thought these looked like hammers for some reason, and... The spiky tail is pretty cool, crushing some boulders. But anyway, uh, this is even more cheap. So you see where we're going down the line here. This is about two bones before you factor in shipping. And it trickles up to about three plus after that. And there's five pages available of this. And again, these are all one stacks here. So that's just one thing that I really take note of, of trending. When things really start to lose kind of their fat stacks you know that's something i definitely like to take note of again i'm not saying that these are going to come off the list anytime soon they i mean who knows they may they may not white mexican theory everything comes off the list it's just a matter of fact everything comes off the list eventually it's just a matter if konami decides to rat them or not and of course erratas are you know pretty terrible for the most part and they really water down power and decrease value but you never know you really never know konami's relatively unpredictable with what they decide to lift off the list so tempest is gonna be next this is uh you know been off the list for quite a while now there's three versions of this this obviously being the secret rare is the highest rarity and this is about four bones before you factor in shipping, and then after shipping, it's about five bones, and then that's pretty much where it sits at. Again, these are, surprisingly enough, all one stacks on the first page, and then there is four pages available for this. And uh, again, this came back, didn't really make a big deal, but, you know, really cool artwork, and there's some pretty cool blending you can do with this, and, you know, time, it's just time will tell when the other Dragon Rulers get released. Next is going to be a Palmerization, OG Palmerization. So, for some reason... This card is pretty much good money all across the board, except for the majority of the commons. Uh, you can see here the highest rarity is the dual terminal four. No surprise, dual terminal. You know, proofs in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen. Dual terminal. Uh, you guys need to get on your dual terminals. I'm telling you, White Mexican is telling you get on the dual terminals. And I've been investing in dual terminals for several years now, and they um they they are they are not being replenished. So. Uh, unless, you know, people have cases of these and they just decide to slap them all in the market anytime soon. These are gonna, definitely going to be limited quantities. So the common dual terminal 4 is ranging around 14 bones. And yeah, it's about f actually like 15 once you factor in shipping. And then it goes all the way up to almost 25 and then 27 and then 28 and then a whopping 41 bones. So this has like obviously been a clear target of like a buyout or uh, definitely has massively severely dwindled in numbers insane price points on this i don't personally believe i have any any dt versions of this and i've invested in a plethora of of random dual terminal stuff unfortunately i didn't pick up on this one really cool artwork this is a kind of the uh the alternative artwork for polymerization which looks really good but all across the board polymerization is is holding up very very well in price point the common from advanced demo deck extra pack which is another very very small obscure side set that i'm going to go over uh, probably it's actually in the next tab uh, legend of blue eyes white dragon of course the original og magic stamped version of polymerization and uh, of course if you can get a first edition i mean i don't even want to imagine what first editions are there's 76 listens here so there's a lot but first editions are just going to be ungodly expensive we're talking about gen one set one 
the legendary collection kaiba a really really complete blow amazing reprint set one of my top favorite legendary collection sets as well as yugi's world and joey's world this is you know ranging between four and six duelist pack yugi which is sitting around five and you know that's, that's pretty much kind of where it borders off everything else is around like three ish bones or so three three two bones and uh don't get this confused with dt even though it's kind of like the same rarity it's this star foil from one of the star packs and all that which is it's, just, it's kind of like the, the the crash and burn attempt to kind of revitalize dt and the, the battle pack stuff was kind of it's kind of interesting uh, i actually personally kind of like some of the some of the stuff but anyway that's going to be pretty much the cutoff all the other ones aren't really worth much uh, else but the dt and or obviously collectability of the lb ones and the secrets are going for some pretty fat stacks so if you guys check your polymerizations check uh, what versions you have and slap them on the market if you guys want to see you know there's always got to be a buyer remember that there always has to be a buyer you're not going to make any of the any of the money without the buyer so keep that in mind but you know the the prices are there the prices are there all right so advanced demo deck extra pack i've never heard of this this is all common it's only 10 different commons i don't know if this was like a european exclusive or what i'm i just i've never heard of this set ever in my life i was going through tcgp looking for some obscure sets and i came across dark legends in this set so this was the second set that i decided to showcase and this, this is worth pretty good money i mean again this common version is about there's only nine listings again it's i think the last time i checked it's it is pretty much at this mark price it's about seven bones the galaxy serpent is around four ish link spider again you'll have to go in and, and actually verify it's just a quick flash price point but for just being commons for some reason this very just obscure side set is worth relatively good money i mean a couple bones for pretty much each one so being just commons and very obscure kind of random commons at that but just wanted to showcase it really quick all right so the last card i want to showcase for you guys tonight is going to be first of the dragons there's actually several different prints of this my personal recommendation would be the original prints from new challengers of course there was the the mega pack reprint as the same rarity as a super rare and then i think there was a couple commons as well and this just something about this card is really cool so it's two normal monsters and it can't be destroyed by battle unless it's a normal monster and it's uh, unaffected by other monster effects it's a 27 beater fusion and the biggest thing is like the artwork the artwork is just really blow out i really think the artwork is really good in this card it is just a super rare but you know i i like super rares i mean it's still hollow foil there isn't any kind of crazy high blowout rarities in this and i don't know this is kind of just a side a side obscure card that i feel like not a lot of people know about and i'm not saying that the effect is super blowout but the biggest thing is this card is insanely cheap and even though it has a couple prints um again i just want i can really appreciate the super super rare first edition og prints and they're literally like two bone two bones pretty much all across the board for this first page they're all pretty much two bone two bones across the page across the board for the first edition lightly played and then you know near mints again there's one stack for two so four pages available so that's all i have for you guys tonight Yu-Gi-Oh has been part of my life for two decades i apologize my last video i said 10 decades no the white mexican is not 100 years old uh not yet at least and uh, this this game i'm really compassionate about this game there's a lot of amazing stuff that this game can can bring to the table i love the brotherhood the trading the investments the deck building the dueling there's there's so many amazing things that this game brings and it definitely gives back Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys are making some fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.